the LMs have shifted my output into just absolutely ludicrous speed. A lot of people call this vibe coding, but I've been coding since I was like five or six years old and all coding is vibe. So I don't really use that word. I like to call it code gen because I figured that's actually what it's doing. We're just generating code. So what is code gen? Like this is not a magic thing. How we think about this is it's just process, which is just software development process and some really expensive explicit guardrails. And so how this kind of breaks out actually is it's just specs um, plus really tight tests and you just mix in a bunch of LLM in there. Where I started to deviate from where a lot of my friends were doing is I started focusing a lot on pre-planning. Camille mentioned this. Um, my brain is rotted, by the way, with this. This is all I can think about. But really what this means, is it's a lot of specs. It's a lot of PRDs. I build prompt prompt docs everywhere. Um, and then what's really nice with Cloud Code, and this is how things have quite changed since I, I wrote that blog post in February, um, with Cloud, Cloud, Cloud Code, which I can't say easily, um, you just give it the goals and watch the commits roll in. So with all that planning, it leads you down this path, which means it's kind of fully agentic. We have multiple sessions. I'm just supervising. And, and a test's really enforced that everything is working. And so I can just sit here and play Tetris. The robots are coding. This is really awesome. This works so well, but it's super weird. It's super unsettling, but we are hyper productive. And like I said, 90% of our code is done via um, AI CodeGen. Now on to like a greenfield workflow. This is the actual workflow um, that I think attracted a lot of people to my blog post. The idea was you just go start with an idea. So you start with something and you say, hey, like I want to build, you know, a mobile app that does X, Y, and Z. My biggest hack here is this idea that a conversation that you go to the conversation with LLM, I use ChatGPT 4.0 um, and ask it one question at a time or, or have it ask one question at a time. Sorry. So what I'll say is to it, the prompt is basically this. Here is my idea. I want to make a mobile phone um, app for dogs or whatever it is. Um, help me hone this, this idea. Ask me one question at a time. I prefer yes or no questions. Now, as I unpack this, the reason why this is important is because what it does is it tells me or it tells the LLM that I don't want some really, you know, sometimes it'll drop like 40 questions. And I don't want to ask 40 questions. I want the robots to do all the work. I don't want to do any work. Um, and so I make it say one question at a time. This helps extract all of my ideas, all of my thought processes, everything out of my brain and puts it into the context window of the LLM. The second thing is by saying I prefer yes or no questions, it aggressively simplifies those um, questions to the point where they're very easy to to answer you can do this um very easily by um you know turning on a voice mode um you know just taking a walk this doesn't have to be in front of your computer because the yes or no question hack just allows you to minimize the amount of effort you have to put into here and it extracts so much data that the specs become really 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 good um this QA that I have, I turn that into a spec.md. I'll often use a um, reasoning model to do this. So I'll take all the context that I just piped into a ChatGPT or whatever, 4.0 mini or 4.0, and then I'll swap the model to an 01 Pro, which I find really good. I don't know if it's actually good, or an 03. Um, and I'll then put that into a spec.md. The important thing here is the, the, the keystone of this entire process is the spec. If you don't have the spec really locked down, um, your prompts won't work. And it's pretty wild. Um, I, I spent a lot of time on this spec. Lately, it's gotten so good that I honestly don't read them. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. From there, I, I start the planning process. So that was just the idea kind of generation process. From the planning process, I'll feed that spec again into the reasoning model. And then I'll have the reasoning model actually generate the code gen prompts. Specifically, I don't want to do any of that work. So it will generate those prompts itself. And it does a pretty good job at writing those prompts. Um, and then I have a couple docs and I put those in my, my route. Um, and then one of my prompts, you know, if you, if you check out my blog, I have an example prompt there for the prompt that generates a prompt plan. And I do a lot of TDD. So I do a lot of test-driven development. This really is the bumper for hallucinations. I don't get a lot of those. I've added an extra feature. I don't get a lot of just wild style stuff that LLMs are known for because the, the test-driven development makes the LLM conform to a set of tests. And if the tests fail, it knows it's done wrong. Now, the cool part about this is it doesn't matter what you use to code. I use Cloud Code, but you could use Copilot, Cloud Web, whatever you want, you get to just pick your poison. Uh, and the Greenfield loop is pretty much straightforward, right? It's just you plan, you code, you test, you commit, you magic, you do it again. For those of you boomers like me in the room, this sounds a lot like waterfall, right? You're basically, you know, setting a spec, then you then you you do some planning, you build a big requirement stock, and then you build it, and then you're done, right? Well, 
Maybe, but the thing is, it's like 15 minutes. It's really awesome. And the, and the LLM needs clear specs. It's basically like me in 2001 doing Java. Like I needed something really great. And the microcycle is waterfall, but it's so, so fast. And you can do it concurrently, which is really exciting for us. So we have one agent that writes code, another one that will write docs, and a third one will be boosting the tests. Um, how do you make this more robust? Well, we think a lot about the code quality. So we're doing a lot of things like this. My friends are laughing at me about the formal proofs part because it's a pain in the ass and maybe it doesn't work. Who knows? But we've been thinking a lot about what is the defensive coding practices that can help us know what the code does when we actually don't know what the code does with our brains. 